Okay. Hi guys, and welcome back to the Chem 111 lab video series. This week we're doing analysis of Alka-Seltzer via gas evolution. Experiment 14. Let's not forget to do our safety check. Make sure you've got your closed-toed shoes and long baggy pants. You'll also need your snazzy lab coat. And don't forget your gloves and your goggles or glasses. <laughs> in this week's lab, you'll be taking a closer look at the chemistry of a commercial product that's ingested by millions every day, Alka-Seltzer tablets. Essentially, you'll get to perform the same acid-base reaction that the tablets undergo with the acid in your stomach, and then you'll measure the volume of its gaseous product. Then, after some help from Dalton's law of partial pressures, you'll get to apply the ideal gas law and use stoichiometry to determine the contents of the Alka-Seltzer tablet. Your goal for this lab is to determine the mass percent of sodium bicarbonate, NaHCO3, in Alka-Seltzer tablets. To accomplish this, you'll first need to set up an apparatus that can measure the volume of gas that forms as a product of a reaction. Then you'll get to perform the same reaction that takes place in your body between Alka-Seltzer tablets and stomach acid. You'll react the tablet with HCl, and by using your apparatus, you'll be able to measure the volume of CO2 gas that is formed. From this volume, you'll then perform calculations using the ideal gas law to determine the moles of CO2 gas that formed. And then you'll use Alka-Seltzer reaction stoichiometry to calculate the mass of sodium bicarbonate that reacted. To perform your analysis today, the first thing you need to do is set up your apparatus that can measure the volume of gas formed from a reaction. Your apparatus consists of a burette, a leveling bulb, which is a plastic bulb with an opening at the bottom, and your reaction chamber which is a large test tube that has some Alka-Seltzer and a smaller test tube containing HCl. The burette is needed so that you can accurately measure the volume of CO2 gas that was formed when the Alka-Seltzer reacts with the HCl. When the CO2 gas is formed, it will displace the water in the burette, and then the difference between an initial and final volume reading will give the volume of gas. First, clamp your burette holder to the burette stand. Then clamp your burette to the burette holder. Next, just clamp your leveling bulb to the pole. Then clamp your large test tube to the pole. Additionally, instead of a burette stand, you can also use the poles in the middle of the lab bench. Now fill up your apparatus by adding water to the leveling bulb. For starters, we recommend adding water only until the burette is halfway full. Go ahead and connect your apparatus to your empty large test tube. Now make sure your apparatus is bubble free by disconnecting it from the reaction chamber and then making sure the water levels in your bulb and burette always remain equal. Go ahead and move the leveling bulb up and down until the bubbles are released and the water levels consistently remain equal. Once you've removed all possible air bubbles from your system, take the temperature of the water in your leveling bulb and write it down. While you're at it, also write down the atmospheric pressure of the room. This will be provided by your instructor or can be found on the device in the front of the room. You're now ready to prepare your reaction chamber. First, make sure your 6 inch test tube is completely dry. Next, weigh out about 0.1 to 0.15 grams of an Alka-Seltzer tablet. Make sure the sample is ground up well. Now add the sample to your large test tube. Now carefully fill your small test tube 3 quarters of the way full with HCl by use of your plastic pipette. Then carefully insert the small test tube in the larger test tube using forceps. Then carefully clamp the reaction chamber to the pole. Make sure not to spill any HCl since you don't want the reaction to take place before you're ready. Don't attach your system to the chamber just yet. Now raise the leveling bulb to adjust the water level in your burette to be between 0 and 5 mils. At this time, you can connect your system to the reaction chamber. 
Now before you can do anything else, you must equalize the pressure in your system with that of the atmosphere. Thus, just raise the bulb until your levels are equal. Once your pressures are equal, then write down the initial volume of water in the burette to two decimal places. You're finally ready to perform the analysis. React the Alka-Seltzer with hydrochloric acid by loosening your clamp holding your reaction chamber and then tilting the test tube so that the hydrochloric acid pours onto the Alka-Seltzer powder. Then retighten your clamp and watch. Notice how as the reaction proceeds, the water level in the burette changes. This is due to the production of CO2 gas which pushes the water in the burette. Your reaction is done when the water level in your burette stops changing. Do not write down this volume. You now must equalize the pressures again before you obtain your final volume reading. Thus, just lower your leveling bulb until its water level is equal to that in the burette, and then write down the volume of the water in the burette to two decimal places. Now get ready to perform your analysis again. Dump out your reaction chamber into a waste beaker, rinse both test tubes with water, and then dry them thoroughly. You'll need to repeat your analysis two times for a total of three trials. From the volume of CO2 gas that was produced in the reaction, you can use the ideal gas law to calculate the moles of CO2, and then, using the reaction equation and stoichiometry, you can find the grams of sodium bicarbonate in your Alka-Seltzer tablet. Importantly, even if you have an upset stomach during lab, do not ingest the Alka-Seltzer tablets. Nothing in the lab is meant to be consumed. Instead, just think about this chemistry taking place inside your stomach to cure your indigestion. Thanks, chemistry.